Everybody takes a Greek haircut, and can Starbucks deliver a killer cup of coffee? Hello fellow traders everywhere. Adam Hewison here, co-founder of Market Club with your midday market update for Friday the 9th of March. You know, we have a number of stocks making 52-week highs, and we've got 10 of them lined up here for you to look at using our 52-week high rule on a Friday. Also, we'll be looking at three stocks on the move. Starbucks is one, of course, Dr. Horton, and Green Mountain Coffee Roasters. Also, all the sectors are plus today. Interesting, on a Friday, we bounced back from that Tuesday disaster, and things are looking much better today. So let's go to the charts and see what's going on right now. But first, let's take a look at our Market Club Investors Summit that's coming up very, very soon, at the end of the month, the 27th to the 30th, just outside of Salt Lake City. I'm going to be there. I hope you can make it. You can give us a call toll-free, find out about if the program is right for you. 1-877-219-1482, extension 10234. Once again, that number is 1-877-219-1482. If you're calling, <coughs> excuse me, if you're calling from overseas, it's 1-801-341-3981. So give us a call, same extension, 10234. Love to hear from you. The call is toll-free if you're in the States, and uh, we'll tell you all about the conference, and uh, we hope to see you there. So we've got a few seats left, and we hope to... Uh, have you join us. So let's go to the markets and let's see what's going on right now. So let's go to our portfolio and we're going to be looking at the S&P 500 and you can see right away this market has bounced back. This was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We've come right back. The market is slightly higher for the week and if we look at our weekly charts we'll, you'll see that right away. And that's where we are right now. So we, this is going to be a new high weekly close on the S&P 500, meaning it's the fourth week in a row it's gone higher. So let's see if it maintains it. We may see a little sell-off on the close, but who knows what's going to happen there. But generally speaking, the trend is longer term. We've been very bullish. The monthly is still positive. The weekly is a little bit mixed because, the, because of this break here. And I think we have to give this market maybe a little bit more time. If Certainly, if we go over the highs, which is around 378, uh, 379, I think that's going to change the dimension of this market. But for now, I think you want to be a little bit cautious ahead of this. But we do have some markets that are making 52-week highs, and we'll be looking at those in just a little bit. So let's go to our next market. In both the S&P and the Dow and NASDAQ are all plus 75. Looking at the NASDAQ, you'll get an idea that's a weekly. Obviously, we're closing right close to the highs there. We haven't made a new high yet on the previous high, but it will be a new high close for the week. And let me go back to our daily chart. And you can see it's just back up there now. Is it going to smash through here? I'm not so sure. We do have a weekly negative on this, so indicating that the trend is somewhat choppy. But uh, we'll get a better feeling for this probably next week. So looking at silver, which has had its share of ups and downs, but it's a plus 55, meaning it's a trading range. This, these are the, what the scores mean. It tells you immediately what to look for. So with a trading range, we want to be using our Williams Percent R indicator, and we'll put that in right now. So I'll just go below chart studies, the Williams Percent R. It's easy to do. And we'll take that off, and we'll just put the Williams Percent R there and close it up. And there it is. So we've gone from a very oversold condition, which is right here, which correlates to this area here. And now we're getting into an overbought condition. Now with a plus 55, you're waiting for an overbought condition. You're actually looking for a reversal to come back down. And that's what we're looking for right now. So if we go into our, put our other tool on, our on-chart studies, our Donchian trade channels, you can see we got towards the bottom part of the trading channel and we've bounced back up. Not unusual. If we get back up to the midpoint, then I think that's a place to probably look to see if the market's going to reverse. But right now it's a trading range and it should be used and traded as such. So let me put one more study on there, which would be a parabolic, the PSAR. And you can see very how close that PSAR is today. And that comes in at 34.46, and the market is at 34.14 right now. This is real-time prices, so it'll give you an idea of what's going on. So let's uh, go back to our portfolio, and let's look at this. Spot gold. Spot gold is minus 75. This is in a negative mode. This is uh, all of our trade triangles were negative on the weekly and the monthly, and the daily was yes until today. But generally speaking, the trend is down here. You can see we got outside of the 
channel, we pop back in, and we are in an overbought condition here. So I would say we're probably going to see this market chop back and forth before it's all over. I would not be surprised to see more uh, selling coming into this market. We opened right around the 1704 level. We're currently trading around 1708. So if we go below the opening range, uh, I think you may some, see some selling. But nonetheless, it would appear as though the gold market is right now lower for the week. So not by much, but it certainly is lower for the week. So let's go to our next market, and that's going to be copper. Copper is actually, I'm going to leave the weekly, it's still lower for the week. And you see it's sort of gone flat here. We have a plus 55 as a trading range. Uh, overall, longer term, we think it's going to go higher. But uh, right now, uh, let's go to a, uh, a daily chart and take a look at copper and you get a better idea. We'll just do a line chart here. It's very easy to do with Market Club. There's the line chart. You see we stepped out here and stepped out here and then came back. And we're sort of like midpoint here. But nonetheless, we do have it. It is in an overbought condition. We've seen a little pop in the PSR, meaning we may see a little bit more upside action. But uh, generally speaking, I think this market's going to be in a trading range, at least in the very, very short term. So next market we're looking at is crude oil. And crude oil has had a very, very good move today. Uh, on the upside, we've turned the PSA around. Um, you can see that it kicked in right around right around the 106, excuse me, the 107.17 level. So that's where it stands right now. But nonetheless, for a weekly, if we go on to our weekly charts, you'll see this market is actually higher for the week. And I'm going to put a candlestick chart, but not by much. So we may have to chop around here for another week or so. But generally speaking, the trend is your friend, and the trend is still positive on this market. And again, we've, we've, we've shown you this ad infinitum in terms of the, the big pattern here we see. And this is a, a really interesting uh, consolidation in new high levels between the 105 and 110 level. I think we'll see this market go up to the 120 area. That's what we're targeting on the upside. So let's go to our next market. Uh, let's take a look at the euro dollar because that's been really an interesting market so far. And I'm going to go back to our daily. And let's just put, whoop, hold on one second. Just let, me, let me refresh this. So we're going to go back to the daily euro. And uh, we'll take a look and see what, um, here we go. So let's take a look at the daily euro right here. And it's a, mi it's a minus 60, so we know it's in a trading range. And we'll see how this chart looks. So here's the 60 again. And let's just go for, let's say, the last three months. And you can see there's a big down day today. This is going to close pretty much closed on its lows for the week, uh, which is not necessarily a good sign. Longer term, our monthly trade triangle is negative. Only the weekly and the daily are positive, but that's very short term. Um, if we put this on a weekly chart, you'll see just how negative this market looks. This will be a new low close down here. This will be the lowest close in about six weeks. Uh, if you look at the one, two, three, four, five, six weeks, it'll be the lowest close we've seen. And it looks like we're going to test maybe some lower levels here, particularly with we've had this thing with the Greece, um, every, the bondholders taking a haircut um, in their bonds. And we're lending them more money. It, it makes no sense to me, but I'm not in that business of lending loses money. So let's go to our next market. And we're going to be looking at the Reuters Jeffries CRB index. Now, that's bounced back from the 315, 314 area we talked about yesterday on our blog. And you can see how this market's doing on a weekly basis. It's still lower for the week, but generally speaking, we our trade trials are positive, indicating this market wants to go higher. Now, we did have a signal at 323.11 on the monthly. We're lower than that right now, so you can possibly, if you like the idea that this market can go higher, and we do think it will go higher, it may be a good time to get in. Generally speaking, the trend is your friend, and we've got the double bottom here. And uh, let me just put my telestrator on because I can't not do a broadcast without drawing something on the screen for you. So here we have, this is a weekly chart. So here we have the lows here, very important level, the pivot point here. We sort of broke through there. I think if we can see this market next week sort of do this and move higher. I think we're going to go up to much higher levels, probably to the levels we hear. see here, 370, and certainly to the three, I think 345, 350 area. So let's see how that plays out. 
Uh, but let's go and look at the big stars today and the big talking points that, that are happening in the marketplace. And that is the Green Mountain Coffee Roasters. Now, what is interesting here, you'll see this when we get this up as a weekly. I'll do a daily. What you'll see on the, this chart is the fact that we have been negative on this market for some time. And let's just do three months. Hmm, looks like we have a little technical difficulties here with slowness. Uh, and it could be because I haven't restarted this computer. So let's just do a refresh here. And if you look at just, well, let's go back just a simple portfolio look. And we'll see that we've got Green Mountain Coffee Roasters minus 100, Starbucks plus 100. And just a total reverse of uh, what they're looking at. So here we are in let's go to six months and you can see the boom they took a huge hit but look at our, our all of our trade trials we're short from 8350 on the monthly that's quite a bit higher this right back here and you can see we so we got short never went long uh the filter the last filter we put a weekly on there there's there's a sell signal interestingly enough yesterday this is how the trade trials work we had a sell signal 62.93 on this market and you can see it's 60 52 45 you just made ten dollars overnight using trade trials now isn't that cool so let's just emphasize that so here we are the major trend is right here the monthly trend is down you get a signal right here this is a weekly so this is to sell and I think we said it was uh, 62 and change so put that so that's to short or ex actually just short uh, because you wouldn't be exiting this position. You'd be exiting a short position here uh, from this point here. So that would have been a profitable trade. You'd have let the market rally up. You wouldn't have gotten long because the monthly. So you, here you have monthly is for trend. Okay, so that's the key thing to remember. So you, the monthly trade triangle, which is this one right here, is for trend. The timing is created because of the weekly. And that's for timing. So if you can remember that, basically you look at the timing, which is here, and that's from 62.93. So this would be actually 62.93. So that's where you got short yesterday. And look what you just picked up today using your trade triangles. It's a nice trade. Again, this is how trade triangles work, and they can help you make money. So let's clear the screen, and let's go to our next market. And the next market we're going to be looking at is going to be Starbucks. It's a tale of two copies. Look at Starbucks. Starbucks is up today at 2.79%. Not a big move, but look at the move. We got long this market on the 5th of March at 49.27. And here we are, we've got $4 profit in that. So imagine if you had just traded using this simple triangle, you would have made $4 here in Starbucks in this last trade, and you would have made $10 in Green Mountain. So you would have made $14 on just in a few days on a couple of shares, a couple of stocks, I should say. Again, look at, at our longer term trend. We're long from 41 11, but if you go further out, and this is what I want to show you with Starbucks, and I've got this, in fact, let me just take the, let me simplify this chart if I may, and let me just take this, some of these studies off, because you could, sometimes you get too much lines, especially when you go out like this. I'm just going to put the monthlies in here. So this is Starbucks going back to 09. You can see our first buy point was at $10.77. We got out at 23 so uh, let's say 1077 and 23 so let's just let's just call that 22 dollars profit and then we get back in again or you could have gone short but let me go back in again at 2657 and we got out of that at 3464 so 34 let's just call that eight dollars and so now you've got 30 dollars profit and you just get back in here at 41 and it's a trading of 51. So let's say $10. So you've made out of this whole move, you've made a profit without 
thinking about it, not listening to anybody else, you made a $40 profit. on these shares. So here's the first buy, and we said that was at 10.77. You're out here, and that was at 23, I believe. You get back in here, and that was at 26.57. And you're out again here at 34. 60. Oops. Hold on. It's 60. And then you're back in again right here at the last signal we had on the monthly, which is right here, 41.11, and it's currently trading at 51. So you've got a nice $10 profit there. So all together, you would have made $40 just handling or using our trade triangles since March, about March of 09. So there you go. A pretty nice profit uh, with the market trading. So you didn't really miss anything when you consider the low was right around 10 and it's trading at 51. You would have caught the whole move using our trade triangle. So let's clear the screen, go to our last market, and that's going to be uh, Dr. Horton. And we'll take a look and see how that's doing for us. So again, using the trade triangles, you really do catch these moves. So let's get a little bit closer. And you can see that's up a nice move up in this stock today. And we can look at our monthly trade triangles. And here's the monthly that came in here at 12.07. The market's trading at 15.45, a nice profit. And if we put our weeklies in there for timing, remember we have a weekly for timing, you would have gotten out, you would have gotten back in today uh, with the new highs. It just hasn't registered on the chart as of right now. So let me just do a refresh, maybe that'll do it. So there you have it. You had some nice trades. You have a uh, Dr. Horton really doing well. And uh, you, as I say, you catch the moves longer term. You can see we've never been really negative on this market. And that was the only sell signal we had, which is right here, which is OK. But we would have gotten back in today uh, on the opening at 15, excuse me, 14.05, 14.95. So anyway, things are going well. Adam Hewison for Market Club. I'll be back tomorrow with a weekend update, so be sure to check that out. Thanks for using Market Club, and uh, every success in your trading today.